السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته. As you should be aware, we have now approached the holiest month of Islam, Ramadan, about halfway through now. But uh, what is Ramadan? What are the purposes of Ramadan? What are the regulations and obligations upon us during Ramadan? And what is its history in, uh, in, Ramadan, in Islam? Inshallah, I will try to go through these questions about Ramadan and give you a better understanding about Ramadan. So firstly, what is Ramadan? Ramadan, uh, for, uh, Ramadan forms part of the fourth pillar of Islam, of uh, Siyam, fasting. It is located in the ninth month of the Islamic Hijri calendar. Uh, the word Ramadan originates from the Arabic term Ramad. Ramad means uh, intense heat. Therefore, Ramadan was named this as uh, Ramadan is the month where Allah uh, eradicates all of our sins as he multiplies our good deeds to such an extent that it uh, eliminates all of our sins and vices. For example, in the hadith it is said, the Prophet sallallahu is reported to have said, whoever, whoever draws nearer to Allah by performing any of the optional good deeds in this month shall receive the same reward as performing an obligatory deed at any other time, and whoever discharges an obligatory act during this month shall receive the reward of performing 70 obligations at another time. The coming of the month of Ramadan is based on the Hilal, the Hilal of the sighting of the new moon, this is in, in accordance with the teachings of uh, the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam who said, fast when you see it and break your fast when you see it. This shows that we should start our fast of uh, the month of Ramadan from when we can see the new moon. The latter part of the hadith also tells us that the end of Ramadan can be indicated by the new moon uh, and uh, indicates the day of uh, Eid al-Fitr. During Ramadan, Muslims all around the world uh, keep fasts from uh, uh, daylight uh, to uh, during daylight hours counting from uh, Fajr to Maghrib. During the fast, Muslims must abide by some guidelines uh, of fasting, including the prohibition of uh, eating, drinking, and intimate uh, contact during the daylight hours. In Ramadan, Muslims must also uh, avoid doing their usual sins, such as cheating, lying, cursing, swearing, etc., as it spoils the fast. However, we also need to bear in mind that these acts uh, are still haram outside of Ramadan and are still sinful. Now arises uh, the question, what is the purpose of Ramadan? Ramadan has been bestowed upon the Muslims in order for us to be able to reflect on our lives and our shortcomings and ask for repentance for them. In addition to this, it allows us uh, to move on from these sins and rectify our lives. It also serves as a way to teach us discipline and self-control, as Allah has made some of our beloved acts haram temporarily, uh, eating, drinking, etc. If we can control these desires during the month which are usually permissible, then surely it can allow us to uh, control us from doing uh, impermissible acts all year round. This month also allows us to create a stronger bond with our Creator Allah, who has given us uh, this month where there are many opportunities to repent and gain reward to reform ourselves. When one, uh, perform, when one prepares for the fast, the person uh, must uh, first make an intention to keep the fast. This is known as uh, niya, which can be done verbally or through the heart. This is done to tell us uh, wh what we are doing and why. Without the niya, the fast will not count and will need to be repeated. After that, one may partake in the sunnah of taking sabur. This is having the breakfast before dawn at the last portion of the night. It is a great way of earning blessings and reward, as uh, Rasulullah has been reported to have said, Verily, Allah and his angels send barakah upon those who eat suhoor. Suhoor is an important sunnah, as it provides strength for our ibadah, it differentiates us from the Ahlul Kitab, who did not use to take suhoor, and it aids our temper and provides an extra opportunity to make prayers and du'as when they are most accepted. At the end of one's fast, we partake in iftar. Iftar is the completion of the fast where one breaks the fast at the time of uh, Maghrib. It has been narrated by Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa who said, the fasting person experiences two occasions of joy, at the time of iftar and at the time of meeting their Rabb. This highlights the beauty and happiness a person may feel at the time of iftar as it has been compared to meeting Allah. The sunnah of iftar is to break the fast immediately after sunset and should not be delayed. However, it should not reach an extent where one partakes in iftar for such a long, uh, prolonged time that they miss uh, the Maghrib Salah. Therefore, it is best to break the fast with a single date and eat it properly after the Salah. During the fast, there are also some uh, makru, disliked acts which spoil the fast. These include uh, chewing or rubbing plastic or anything inedible, to collect one's spit and swallow it to quench uh, thirst, 
to complain of thirst and hunger, to quarrel, argue, or using indecent words and uh, forcing out vomit. All of these actions do not break the fast, but they spoil the fast and reduce the reward earned by it. During the fast, there are also actions which break the fast. Some make uh, qada necessary, while, all, while others also make kafara necessary. Qada is to redo the broken fast again after Ramadan, while kafara is to fast 60 consecutive days as a punishment. Qada is usually applicable for fasts which have been broken out of force, or lack of knowledge, or for medical reasons. It will be applicable for those who have uh, broken fast uh, for uh, exemption also. These, in these include uh, musafir, travelers, one in their menses, the ill who may be affected by fasting, and those who are mentally challenged. These people may redo their fasts when they overcome their excuses for exemption. However, furthermore, fasts missed by children under the age of uh, puberty are forgiven and do not need to uh, make this fulfilled. Uh, kafar will also be made uh, compulsory if a person who broke the fast did the following. Eat or drink or prohibit without a reason, and to consume any medicine without any need. As mentioned above, kafara is recompensation uh, for, by, uh, for breaking the fast. Uh, for 60 consecutive days, you need to redo the fast. If one has, uh, if one has a valid reason for breaking the fast, then only qada will be uh, applicable by fasting that one day only. If one has kafara wajib upon him, but they can't keep the fast for illness, etc., then they must be one of the following. Feed 60 people for their full one day, or feed one person for their full for 60 days, or give 60 people, poor people 1.6 kilograms of wealth of wheat in cash or in food, or give uh, one poor person 1.6 kilograms worth of wheat in cash or food for 60 days. Now I'd like to move on to the activities that one may partake in during the holy month of Ramadan, apart from fasting. There are many other observances we may do to gain reward and forgiveness. One observance is to pray at the Taraweeh Salah. This is Sunnah Makkada for, for both males and females, which was formalized by Umar ibn Umar ibn Khattab. For men, it is preferable to pray Taraweeh in a congregation, while women may pray it at home. Taraweeh Salah is prayed from after Isha time onwards in uh, the form of 20 rakats, broken uh, into two rakats each time. After four rakats, it is sunnah to read, uh, sit and recite the following dua. Subhana lil mulk wal malakuti, subhana lil izzati wal azmati wal haybati wal kudrati wal kibriyai wal jabrut. Subhana al malikin hayin ladhi la yanam wa la yamutu abadan abada. Sukuhan kudusun rabbuna wa rabbul malayikati wa bluor. Glory be to the owner of the kingdom of the earth and the heavens. Glory be to one who uh, commands respect and honor and magnificence and awe and the power and greatness and omnipotence. Glory be to the sovereign, the ever living, who does not sleep nor die. He is the most praised, the most holy, our Lord and Lord of all, the angels and the spirit. From praying Taraweeh Salah, one may gain many virtues. For example, in Sahih Muslim and Sahih Al-Bukhari, it has been written that the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, whoever stands through Ramadan in prayer with, he with faith and hope of a reward will be forgiven his past sins. From this we can understand that praying Taraweeh and, uh, in, in general will increase our chances of gaining a lot of reward and being forgiven for past sins. Another activity we may partake in uh, is uh, taking part in uh, itikaf during the last 10 days of Ramadan by residing in the masjid. If one does undertake itikaf, it must be noted that uh, it is not uh, permitted to leave the masjid unless for wudu, ghusl, answering the call to nature, or any other uh, personal necessity. If one other uh, one leaves the masjid without a valid reason, then they will it will end the itikaf. One may finish and end the itikaf when the uh, Eid moon is sighted. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.